Hey everybody, it is Caleb, and today we're going to be talking about some very deadly C++ mistakes that the government doesn't want you to know. The truth exposed. So where are we going to start? The very first thing is we're going to start with some, you know, uh, things that aren't really that bad, but you might not want to do. And then we're going to get into some actual mistakes that can break your code that you can't do or you definitely do not want to do. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise-level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So the very first thing is using namespace standard or you know any namespace this is dangerous because this can introduce naming conflicts in the future so it's really a good habit to prefix your code with std colon colon c out for example instead of saying using namespace std and then just saying c out yes it's more work yes it can make the code a little bit harder to read however this is considered best practice and I'm honestly just tired of people commenting that I can just use using namespace std. I know, I just don't do it because you're not supposed to do it. A good tip I found on Stack Overflow is that you could be selective and say something like using standard C out, which means you don't have to type standard C out, but you don't bring in the entire standard namespace at the same time. And this is a good answer explaining why this is a problem. Welcome to my video on reading Stack Overflow questions and answers. But you know, this is really helpful. You know, if you say using namespace foo and using namespace bar, you can use the methods from these namespaces, but if you upgrade to a new version of foo 2.0 in this case, and it offers a function called something that matches a function from the other namespace, well now you have a naming conflict and you're gonna have to go and fix all of that code. Definitely not something I want to do. A little unrelated, but I have been doing some Python content. The equivalent of this is if you were to import asterisk from a module, which just brings all of the identifiers into the local scope, which is just dangerous. This is a similar issue, you know, why people don't like global variables. It introduces a higher chance for naming conflicts, bugs, etc. The next issue with C++ development is that people are using C++ like it is C. Now, fortunately, most of C is included in C++. So if you're coming from C, it's really easy to start using C++ and you're not really gonna have too many issues with your code. However, you're also missing out on a lot of benefits that C++ offers if you're writing code like it is C. So for example, in C++, you can use object-oriented programming. You could use vectors and all of these other things that make your life a whole lot easier. You can use the string class instead of using a character array. So unless you're interfacing with C, I would do my best to use the C++ capabilities. Now with this, a lot of people will still use C++ capabilities, but they'll still have some lingering things that you would often see if you were coming from C programming. So for example, instead of using something like a vector, which is a dynamic array, you will just use a normal array. Now don't misunderstand me. I understand there's a purpose for an array. However, in most development scenarios, a vector is going to be a better choice, especially for modern development. If you're developing for a computer, then you don't really have to worry about that little bit of overhead that a vector is going to introduce as opposed to just a standard array statically sized. Same thing, people will optimize their code by using things like floats instead of doubles. This is really just dumb if you're working on something like just a normal computer where you're not seriously restricted on memory size because those kind of optimizations are going to be so much smaller than actually writing clean code because most of your issues with your software is not going to be in your data type choice, but instead the, the way you build your logic or the way you structure your application and the bigger architecture. So don't write your code thinking that you need to optimize every little thing and in the process, write code that introduces bugs or issues in your software. You know, if you are trying to optimize for memory use and you switch from a double to a float, this is dumb because now you're going to potentially introduce 
rounding error or number issues in your software. So you, you were trying to optimize, but in the process, you actually made your software worse. Now, this is coming from the perspective of someone who does all of his development on just a standard computer. So I can't speak to those who have to be, you know, really, really careful for like small devices. But in general, I think the majority of people watching that my content are not going to need to do those kinds of optimizations because they're actually going to be worse, not better. This is called premature optimization. You don't want to do that. So design your software, use the best data type that makes your code readable. With this is to use the capabilities that are available to you, such as things with C++ 11 or C++ 17. This is just crazy. I was in a, a university and I used vectors in my C++ code. And basically one of the rules was that, hey, if your code doesn't compile, it's an instant zero. And you know you have to compile a little bit different to use C++ 11. So I submitted my code and I was given a zero. So I'm in a school that's supposed to be prepping me for you know modern application development, and I'm not allowed to use a capability that was implemented in C++ 11, which is now nine years ago, possibly 10 years or more when you guys watch this video. That's just crazy to me. I mean, in the teacher's defense, it was a TA who was doing the grading. So I'm sure he was just like, run, oh, it didn't run next run oh it didn't run overall i think there should have been a little bit more effort in encouraging people to use some of those modern capabilities for example there's a lot of things that make your life easier such as initialization syntax the ability to assign and then put curly braces and all of the values in there instead of saying vector dot pushback that's a little bit extra work here's another tip similar to using c stuff inside of c plus plus and that is trying to use a pointer anytime you can don't do that inside of C++ because C++ has the option to use references, which is almost always a better option than pointers. For example, you can use references for parameters and functions, and that will allow you to change or swap values, and that works just fine. You don't always have to use pointers. Next up is logical errors, and these are things that the compiler is not going to catch. You're not going to get a compiling error, and you're not going to get a compiler warning. So a beginner should understand the difference between an error, a warning, and then a logical error. So a compiling error, the first one I mentioned there, is your code's not going to compile. You have to change it before you can compile your code. A warning, your code can still compile, but it noticed some potential issues in your code. And then that final error is the compiler worked. It didn't notice any potential issues, but there is something wrong in your code, AKA a bug. So if you're not designing your code good, <laughs> you're going to introduce bugs in your software. And these are known as logical errors. So you should understand as a beginner, the difference between those different things. There is a difference between a compiling error, a compiler warning, and then a logical error. In other words, if your code compiles, it doesn't necessarily mean everything is good. You need to go an extra step and really think through the logic of your program. Seems obvious, but for a while, I actually didn't even know there was a difference between an error and a warning back when I started software development. So it's useful to know the different types of issues. And the last issue here is using C++ for the wrong purpose. And maybe this is just a thing where it really is based off of what you're taught in school. You know a little bit of C++, so you're thinking, oh, how can I use C++ to do this? But instead, you should approach software development thinking, oh, here's a problem. What tools can I use to solve this problem? So don't start with the technology, start with the problem and figure out how to solve it. And the next thing is to just use C++ for its intended purpose. You know, if you're using C++ for game development, that's great. However, I get a lot of people asking me, oh, how can I use C++ for web development or questions like this? And really, I think you should first figure out the problem and then figure out what's the solution to this problem. You know, do I need to use Python for this? Can I use C++ for this? And start asking those questions. So instead of starting with the technology and figuring out what problems you can solve, maybe start with some problems and think about what tools I need to solve those problems. I mean, I experience this personally as I've been doing some data science-y stuff, and I'm finding it's just a whole lot easier to use Python instead of forcing C++ to be used in a data science-y way. 